let's begin again talking about what is going on. It is so important that you as a believer have a clear understanding. We, there are things we don't know, but there's enough that we do know that we need to know how to pray accurately. Somebody asked me one time, why are you so determined in prayer to learn things and learn things about the enemy? When I was a young girl, I was at Lee College and I was serving God. And all at once I woke up and I realized, man, something terrible is going to happen to a member of my family. And so I got some of the young girls with me and we went back to the dorm and went upstairs to the prayer room and began to pray. We prayed all that afternoon to the wee hours of the morning and we prayed in tongues. And at the end, I began to tell them, as much as we prayed, I have not moved the devil one bit. Whatever the plan of the enemy is, I have not changed it. I went on down and went to, to bed and got some sleep. And in come, they began to knock on my door. And they said, it was Sister Hathcock wants to see you in her office. They've gone to get your sister. And I knew, I knew whatever the devil planned, it had been carried out. I felt abandoned by God. I thought, how could this happen? My parents served you. My sister served you. I was serving you. Why did this happen with all our praying? We don't have all the answers, but one thing I do know is that even if you pray, prayer does not take authority over the enemy. You are responsible to take authority over the enemy. When I begin to learn that, I begin to stop the enemy in a lot of his attacks. I want you to know prayer is so important, but prayer, when it becomes the enemy, you must take authority over the enemy. You have that responsibility. Jesus has already done everything he's going to do about the enemy. You're the one in authority now. I like what he says in Ephesians 6, 10. I find a word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all categories are all strategies of the devil. The devil has a lot of strategies. Whatever opening there is, he has a strategy. And many times it starts with your mind, putting a thought in your head. But the Bible says we have power over that. We need to learn it. In verse 12, it says, For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty power in his dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Then he gives you the answer. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. If this, when you talk about this plague, when you come this virus, this is a time of evil. This is a time when we need a demonstration of God. It's a time when every believer needs to start praying like they've never prayed before. It's time for every believer to start standing up against and using the authority of the name of Jesus against this virus, this plague. And ministers, it's time for you to teach your people how to pray. Then it says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in that time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Then begins to tell all the weapons to put on. So God's telling everybody, stand. Be strong. Don't cave in. Don't get into fear. Remember, you serve God, the one that created the heaven, the earth, and all that is in it. That is the God that we serve. That's who you belong to. And you have the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of his name. We need to start using it. James 4, 7 says, be humble. I love that. So humble yourselves before God. But then he says, resist the devil. Many times people want to pray and they want to humble themselves before God. And then they think God will take care of everything. No, be humble. Realize it's his power. It's his name. It's his blood that gives you the ability to stand against the devil, to resist him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God 
and God will come close to you. So it sounds to me when you want victory, it's you and God working together. I like what John Wesley said. It said, it seems to me that the only time God interferes or God gets involved in the affairs of mankind is when someone prays how right he was. We are responsible to pray. When I look in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out, talking about Jesus, and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. When you begin to look into the Word of God, you see how many times Jesus prayed. I wrote this down. The words pray or prayer is used at least 25 times in the brief period of the life of Jesus in the four Gospels. So it tells me that Jesus lived a life of prayer. Now, if Jesus needed to live a life of prayer, how much more do we need to live a life of prayer? And how much more do we as pastors need to live a life of prayer? In Luke chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. So here we find he rises up early. Here we find he spent all night praying to God. When is the last time you spent a long time praying? I had someone one time come down to the altar because I called the saints to come down and pray. And they prayed just for a few minutes and got up. And the Spirit of God hit me. And I said, get back down. You haven't prayed this thing through. God wants to talk to you. You've just talked to him and then you got up. Go back to that altar and let God talk to you. They came to me afterwards. They said, Pastor, it is amazing. They said, I will never pray like I have been praying. I, she said, God located me. I had always went to him and just prayed to him what I wanted, what I needed for him to do, but I never waited on his answer. You see, God loves you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to give you the answer for whatever you're going through. Listen to what I like this. Second Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity is of already work. Only he who now letteth will let until it be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and will destroy. Listen, what he's saying here is that before we're taken out of the way, we're the ones that's hindering the Antichrist from being revealed. We're not hindering demon spirits from having activity, but the Antichrist cannot fully reveal himself till we're taken out of the way. You know what that tells me? We've got a whole lot more power than we realize we do. We have a whole lot more authority than what we realize we do. If we will wake up out of our sleep, if we will start seeking God more than we have ever sought Him before, and if we'll sit, spend time worshiping Him, loving Him, and be silent for Him to speak to us. I tell people, they say, well, Pastor, I pray on my way to work and on my way home, so I get in an hour a day. I said, who are you kidding? You're speaking to God, but I don't really call that the highest form of prayer. I call that the highest form of prayer when you're not looking around, when your mind is not watching traffic, when you're not playing a game like I did one night. I was playing cards and I thought on the computer and I thought, well, while I'm playing cards, I'll just spend some time worshiping God at the same time. Well, the next day when I came to church and we were worshiping God and I'm worshiping God, all I was doing in my mind is playing cards. And I said, stop, what is this? This isn't right. And the Spirit of God said, how do you like it, Dathan? I said, I didn't like it. He said, neither did I yesterday. And I've learned that can be my added time, but that's not my prayer time. My prayer time is when I'm worshiping Him. I'm not just petitioning Him for what I want. I'm staying there long enough at his feet that I find out what he wants. In this day and hour that we live in, we better learn how to hear what he wants and what he has to say and learn to pray how he wants us 
to pray. God bless you. See you again.